And joining us now, great to welcome to uh, the Book Talk segment, uh, New York Times best-selling author uh, Neil Stevenson. He's written another great uh, science fiction novel. This one is called Seven Eves. We're going to find out about it. He's also written, of course, the number one New York Times bestseller, Anathem. And uh, Neil Stevenson joins us from Seattle today via the telephone. And Neil, good to talk with you. How are you today? It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good to have a chance to chat with you. I'm glad we kind of worked out the schedules. I know you were on a, kind of a busy book tour recently, but uh, good to have a chance to uh, talk with you a couple minutes about the book. And uh, I've always been a big fan of uh, of the science fiction genre. This kind of combines a lot of things, though, and it doesn't it. It's uh, I think it's it's pretty clearly a science fiction book, but it it starts in the very near future. So the opening, you know, is it feels more like a, a contemporary kind of thriller type book and. And then it gets kind of more science fictiony as it goes along, I guess you could say. Yeah, I don't like to give away too much, so I'll, I'll try not to do that. But I, but I, I will say uh, I like the premise. Uh, I've always thought about this too. He, uh, the premise is part of it. The moon the moon blows up. I've always wondered what 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 happened if the moon blew up, and, and that's part of your story, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's, uh, this is me trying to answer that in a lot of uh, de detail and imagine what the the consequences would be. And to make a long story short, the consequences are pretty bad, and uh, it, it, the people of Earth uh, have just enough time to construct a space arc and uh, send uh, send some people off into space to get get clear. Uh, but before disaster strikes, yeah, they uh, they find a way to live kind of in a in a space station situation. Is that right? Yeah, we it, it's built around the uh, international space station that we have today with a few fictional add-ons, uh, and um, it's uh, what they end up doing is creating a swarm of smaller vessels uh, called arklets, uh, little spaceships that can hold a few people at a time, and. Uh, and they kind of uh, surround the International Space Station like a swarm and, uh, and, and create an environment for, for people to live in. Problem is, though, uh, when this uh, thing happens about to the moon, of course, it affects the, the Earth and, and the atmosphere and, and livability and all that. But uh, the decision has to be made who, uh, who survives, right? Who gets to go to these uh, arklets? That's the drama, right? Yeah, that's part of the drama is, you know, there's some obvious people like uh, astronauts, people who know how to do things in space. So that's, that's a no-brainer. But, but then, uh, you, you know, there's, uh, there's a, a desire to try to preserve the, the ethnic and cultural diversity of the, the human race. And so they, they come up with a procedure that they call the, the casting of lots, which is a way of, of trying to send up, uh, you know, qualified uh, candidates from as many different parts of the world as possible. Without giving anything away, uh, if, if it's part of the plot twist, uh, Seven Eves, uh, what, what does the title mean? The, uh, well, things don't go so well. <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> uh, by, by the time the, the dust settles, uh, we're down to the seven women who are capable of, of uh, having kids and, and, and propagating the, the, the race. And each one of them becomes like the eve of a new uh, separate kind of culture and, and group of, of people that they they try to uh, shape in in their image, their their idea of of what the human race ought to look like. Yeah, fascinating. And this the story takes place uh, was it over five five thousand years too, right? So you really uh, cover a lot of time in, in, in the whole uh, in the whole narrative. Yeah, I thought that telling five thousand years worth of story might be a little much, and so uh, we do a quick cut. <laughs> To, uh, to the distant future, we get a, a peek at how uh, the, the decisions made by those seven thieves eventually played out over time and, and yielded a far future uh, civilization. That's a great, great idea for a story. When you write a, a futuristic type of novel, I know you've, you've done it before, but uh, uh, what kind of gives you the ideas? And then what, what's your process for putting a plot line together like this? You've got to make it all up, right, if it's that far in the future. Yeah, I, uh, uh, you know, in my, in my opinion, um, people need to have a, a, a good yarn, just a good story uh, that, uh, uh, that, that keeps them turning the, the pages. And if you can come up with a good yarn, uh, some interesting characters, some interesting things happening to them, uh, then you sort of got a pony you can ride, you can, you can do a lot of things um, once you've got that foundation to, to build on. So that's kind of my basic approach to uh, 
to, to coming up with these things. How, how about uh, how about the uh, the technology end of it? Uh, uh, you know, you're looking five thousand years in the future, so you have to kind of invent uh, invent technology, I guess, based on what we have today. But you can kind of expand on that, right? Well, it's interesting to see the decisions people make about um, about technology and what they're going to. Uh, choose to, to bring into their lives and what they are going to reject. And um, everyone's got different opinions about that. Uh, you get people say who uh, they use Twitter, but they won't use Facebook. Or, you know, they'll drive a car, but it has to be an electric car. Or, you know, there's all kinds of decisions that all of us are making every day about technology. And um, so it's fun uh, in my line of work to try to imagine what what decisions uh, people would make in uh, an alternate future? When uh, the, the kind of the thesis of your book, five thousand years in the future, you must be optimistic that uh, we're still going to be around then, right? Even if the moon does blow up, right? <laughs> well, I you know I, I read a lot of history, and and my reading of history is that when a crisis happens, when there's a war or a catastrophe. By and large, I think people rise to the occasion and and show the the best part of their nature. Uh, it's when nothing's going on and we're kind of bored and we don't have anything to do that that we we turn to kind of squabbling and arguing about silly stuff. So I I am taking an optimistic view and I'm kind of saying that if something like this happened, sure some people would would screw it up and do do bad things, but uh, by and large, I think we'd see the, uh, the the best in human nature. Well, let's hope the moon doesn't blow up, but but I have thought about that. Is it, what's keeping the moon <laughs> circling? I know it's gravity. I, I still don't understand how it works, but uh, <laughs> if, it, if it ever well, disappeared, you know, I know the tides would be messed up, but, but a lot of other things would happen, too, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of junk would fall out of the sky, let's put it that That's way. That's right. <laughs> well, the name of the book is Seven Eves. Great, uh, as we said, science fiction, uh, kind of a futuristic story, sociology in there as well. And uh, we were talking with uh, Neil Stevenson today. And uh, Neil, you have a website you want to direct people to that get a hold of you with a book? Yeah, it's just uh, Seven Eves with a dot before the E-S. Uh, uh, but y you can find me pretty easily. Um, uh, by going to uh, neilstevenson.com or Harper Collins, which is my publisher, or, or just just search for me uh, on the internet. Great. We also have a place on our website that we we'll post the podcast as well. They can order the book. But uh, Neil, real pleasure to talk to you again. Good luck with the book. Hopefully, uh, we can uh, talk to you again when uh, the next one comes out. And I imagine uh, you have thoughts of making this into a film, right? Or hopefully that somebody will do that. Make, make a great movie. Well, you never know. You you can't you can't rely on it. Uh, you can. You just have to pretty much sit and wait and see what happens. Yeah, uh, that, that's the nature of the business, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Neil Stevenson, good talking to you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.